Hey guys, I recently purchased 187 Epic battery cells from 18650batterystore.com and it was a colossal failure. They ended up selling me my Epic 18650 25P battery cells, which is exactly what I asked for, but nearly 70% of them were bad. And when I say bad, I mean the cells were anywhere from 0.8 volts to about 1.5 volts, well under 2 volts, and when a lithium ion battery gets below its voltage range, in this case it's 2.5 volts, there is a chemical change that happens with the battery and it's permanently damaged. So these were cells that are completely DOA and they're dead. So I ended up going through an RMA process which was relatively painless, but I was a little worried that they were, I was gonna get quite a bit of pushback from having so many cells that were bad, so I ended up doing quite a bit of prep work. I made a video about it, showcasing the issue, um, and I separated the 119 bad cells versus the 68 good cells, and I contacted them. I ended up contacting them on Saturday. 18650batterystore.com gives you three days to contact them about bad batteries, and I didn't realize that. This was the third day, it was a Saturday, I got them on a Wednesday, and I didn't even take a look at them till Saturday, so it's a good thing I did. So their policies are, you gotta be on the ball with their policies, but I ended up sending them an email and then following up with them via phone on Monday and got a hold of them. We're, we were able to work out that I was just going to return the batteries, so I asked for a replacement for the 119 batteries because I still want to do my battery build. They said they're not doing replacements for these batteries because there was a bad batch of 25P cells that were mixed in with all the good cells. So they knew that when they sold that to me, but I guess they didn't have a process for it. So the process now was to ship the 68 good cells back to them and it was up to me to just get rid of the 119 bad cells. This is beneficial for me because I get to keep the 119 cells that are, that are bad and I get to fix them. So that's what I'm doing. But the RMA process was really painless. As, I mean, I think as long as you are on top of it, it's really easy. I give 18650batterystore.com an eight out of 10 because this could have been avoided. I didn't need to get shipped 119 bad cells that I had to ship back. I spent quite a bit of time sifting through all this and figuring it out. But at the end of the day, they just let me keep the old cells and that's pretty cool. But I'm pretty confident in the RMA process with 18650batterystore.com. This is the second time I've done it. They never have really challenged what I've said. So they've just kind of rolled with it so the, the other time, I, I didn't get the right amount of spacers, and they shipped me more spacers, no questions asked. This time, they had a little bit more questions because they wanted to make sure that I, that I had a, you know, a bunch of bad cells, but this was a known issue, so they, they didn't really have anything else that they wanted to chat, chat with me about. We sent about eight emails back and forth, and at the end of the day, I got all my money back except for the spacers. I ended up cutting out a bunch of these spacers so I didn't want to send them back. Now, we need to actually figure out what in the world we're going to be doing <laughs> with these batteries. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing. The issue now is that we have a bunch of batteries that are not working. So let me turn on my voltmeter and we'll connect this up. .982 volts. That's this battery. So this is 0.982 volts. It's a bad battery and I actually want to charge it. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to connect up its positive and negative with these little, I've got some wires here. We're just going to connect up the positive and negative. So I have my battery cell that's 0.9 volts and I'm just going to connect a wire with the negative and the positive and be sure not to connect these wires to anything. I was doing multiples in parallel. That's why these are a little bit longer, but it doesn't have to be like that. So this is a very rudimentary way of doing it. I'll just use some tape. So if you have like a Sky RC like I do, 
where you just have a, a charger of some kind, we can actually fix this cell. So remember, this is a 0.9 volt cell. So we've got it all connected up. And now we can connect up the gator clips. So let's just co connect positive to positive, negative to negative. All right, so now our battery is connected. So let's go check, check out battery meter shows 0.96 volts. So very low voltage. Now we're gonna go back over to our lithium ion battery and we're going to charge this. We can charge at around one amp. So this is a 2500 milliamp hour battery. So you want to charge at 0.5 C or less. That's pretty standard. So one C would be if it's a 2500 milliamp hour pack, 2.5 amps would be 1C. So half that, 1.25 amps would be 0.5C. So we could charge actually at 1.2 amps and we're still at 0.5C, so that's fine. And then it's a 1S, then we're gonna go ahead and try and charge a lithium ion battery with the lithium ion charge. Uh-oh. So it says connect main air port. This is due to the fact that we have such low voltage, it won't actually charge with the lithium ion charge. So what we can do is we can go over to the NIMH battery charge. This does not have a low voltage charge and we can use a very low charge rate. Let's just use 0.2 amps and we'll go ahead and charge this battery. So what we're doing is we're just kickstarting it. So see how the voltage is increasing very rapidly. It went from 0.96 volts to 1.5 volts very quick. What we wanna do is we wanna get down to that low voltage range of about 2.5 volts and so we can actually charge this using the lithium ion charger. But until then, we're gonna use NIMH to actually just bump charge this to the correct voltage. Now see how the voltage is increasing very, very quickly. So we'll just watch this and wait till it gets to 2.5 volts and then we'll switch over from NIMH charging to lithium ion charging. 2.52 volts, great. So now that it's 2.52 volts, let's go back quickly. Oops. Let's go back quickly to the lithium ion battery charge. It's already set exactly where we want it. We'll just go ahead and charge. Now it's 2.49 volts. We're gonna be charging at 1.2 amps and you'll see the voltage increase really quickly. So if you have a hobby charger or a balance charger, you can do that. There's another way you can do this and this is probably the easier method is simply purchase something that'll allow you to charge something like that. So this is another 0.8 volts battery cell and I purchased the XTAR uh, VC4 Plus and this is just on the charge. You can charge, discharge, do a bunch of stuff with this but I just wanna show you what it looks like when you charge a low voltage cell here. Uh, make sure I'm doing the correct, correct positive negative thing. It did that automatically for me and it's red so it's charging. So it's actually gonna charge this for me. And it's as easy as that. You just plug in the cell and it just charges for you. So that's how I'm gonna be charging all these other cells. So this is, gonna, this is gonna be a process that's going to take weeks. But once I get this all figured out, I should have enough batteries to make two battery packs. So I did do a test to see how much capacity I had from these batteries. And we're sitting at about 2300 milliamp hours for these batteries. So they have been degraded. They don't have quite the capacity of a new battery, but I mean, it's free batteries essentially, so it's not that bad. We'll be able to bring these batteries back to life and still get, get some use out of them, which I'm really excited about. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll work through that and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.